uh, welcome to our uh, e-conversations with the Economic Development Directors in South Coast Riverside County. Uh, it is my pleasure to have you all here again, and I appreciate you uh, spending the time. Uh, I think today we, you know, we kind of started this conversation ahead of time, and we're just going to kind of keep going with the free flow and with talking about business. So, um, you know, I'll start with Christine. So, give me. Uh, I know you shared with us a minute ago, but you know, we're recording, and so. Uh, tell us about some of these exciting businesses that are opening up here in Temecula very soon and some of the cool things that you just found out to uh, share with one of our other economic development directors. Yeah, uh, so hello. Um, so over in Temecula, well, I guess this weekend is 4th of July weekend, and so we're all looking for um, stuff that, you know, that we can do safely. And um, so in Temecula, we have a couple of restaurants actually opening this weekend. Um, so one is a major remodel. You may have known the former name is Ta and Oscar's Restaurant. And um, it's on our, I think it's a great location on the Duck Pond in the heart of Temecula. And it's now called Oscar's Brewery. And um, if you've ever been into the old Thai and Oscars, I encourage you just to poke your head in at least and see the major transformation, um, both physically and on their menu that they have um, done over the past um, months that they have been renovating this building and their menu. And they now uh, brew their own beer as well. Um, so they open this week. And then on the other side of town, near the Promenade Temecula Mall, uh, Phil's Barbecue. So Phil's Barbecue is opening this weekend, and um, we're excited to have them as well. Um, so those are a couple of restaurants to try on the city end. Uh, uh, the Harveston Lake is a, it's a, actually a city lake, a city-owned and maintain lake and uh, they have paddle boats open now and um, we also july 1st the city will be opening its uh, community pool for lap swimming and uh, only so uh, if you need to get your laps in some exercise before you visit the restaurant um, you can do that as well and then before while well, we were talking um, I was telling Kimberly that um, actually the city, uh, as a city employee, I need to get my temperature scanned before going into work every day. And um, we have an electronic scanner. And so literally you put your head in, you know, next to this kind of computer thing, a standing computer, and it scans your temperature and um, no humans needed. And the company um, was actually uh, from Wildemar. So some great um, cross promotion and collaboration there. And I'm working on finding the name um, right now. Our public works department actually um, purchased the equipment and they found, they found it um, because they uh, were golfing at Batonga Journey. And Batonga actually have this uh, temperature um, equipment there. So, great story. That's yeah. exciting. That's it. I, I think it's kind of cool. You've got a lot of companies that, um, and I'm curious about this company. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure we're going to find out about this and we'll update everyone yeah. in the next coming. We will look into this. Yeah. 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 So I'm texting them right now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I think this idea of companies in the current, you know, with what's going on of, of pivoting. And I'm wondering if this is one of those situations of a company that pivoted and right. you know, was able to take something that they were doing and, and create something new in our current age. You know, I mean, I know we've got um, a lot of companies around here that have done that. I know you, another one in Temecula, Christine is, uh, um, you know, uh, California distilleries, you know, they, they shifted and started making hand sanitizer yeah. and they're still making it and helping so many people out with that. So I think that that, that pivoting yeah. aspect of business is very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Kimberly, Scott, what you got? <laughs> I want to start off if I can, Kimberly, 
by just congratulating Christine on shopping local and making sure that the city of Temecula is out there buying from other local businesses. <laughs> and to all the other businesses out there, if you're looking to sell your wares, call Christine at the city of Temecula. <laughs> Shop local. Thank you. That's city a of Temecula call. is Thank buying. You. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <money to spend. laughs> so, and with that, Kimberly, I'll let you jump and then I'll jump in too, because I think you had a follow-up to that. Well, I wish I had a laundry list of things like Christine and Temecula have. Um, we do have a few things coming to Wildemar, not, not um, yet able to necessarily um, announce them. We're not quite there yet. But, um, you know, I, I just had my one year anniversary with Wildemar on June 24th. Yay, made it one year. <laughs> um, and as such, I obviously, um, I had to do my year end review and, and my goals and accomplishments and looking forward and all this stuff. Um, and boy, has it changed from, I did my six month review, you know, <laughs> where, where I kind of thought we were going to be. Um, obviously six months ago when I did my six month review, I could not have known that the world would be flipped upside down and. We just don't know. And that's kind of the crazy thing about trying to do economic development right now. We, we just don't know what the next six months look like or the next, you know, year. So we're probably going to be, what I put into my goals for this next year is really a lot more business retention than I thought that I was going to be doing. I thought I was going to, um, we kind of, the businesses that we have in Wildemar, uh, when I, when I had originally written down my goals, they were all good. They're still, a lot of them, most of them are still doing well despite the challenges of the coronavirus. Um, but I thought that it would be a situation where they would be fine running on their own and I could go off and do a little bit more business attraction. <laughs> but, uh, and you know, what does business attraction look like? We were just talking about that too before Patrick pressed record. With um, hotels, if, if you don't already have a hotel under construction or coming in, what does that look like for the future of hotels right now? I don't know that, I don't know that hotel developers are chomping at the bit. I, I don't know that they're not, but if I was a hotel developer, I'd be a little bit cautious right now about what the future of hotels looks like and, and what um, future builds look like for certain development projects. So I think it's gonna be a really interesting year and of course, you know, we could get a vaccine in the next few months, maybe, and all of this goes away. But I tend to think that uh, there'll probably be another virus, probably not far from this one. And we could, this could end up happening over and over. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to change our future of economic development. I don't know what that all looks like. You know, do we just return back to normal in about five or six months? That'd be nice, right? But I, I don't know if that's going to be the I don't know if that's going to be the, the case if we have to continue social distancing in restaurants and our restaurants can only be at 50% capacity. So my next year um, just looks a little bit different what my goals are, just trying to make sure our businesses have what they need to succeed and probably focusing a, a lot on who we already have and making sure that, that they're good to go. And we'll still be doing a lot of business attraction, but probably where I thought it was gonna be flipped just the other way, probably about 80% business retention and 20% business attraction. I thought, I would have thought by now it would have been just the opposite, so. But we're gonna keep, you know, we're gonna keep helping our businesses the best we can and make sure we continue to build them up and, and hopefully get them what they need as much as we can. Yeah, makes sense. Scott? Scott. I just didn't know if it was going to be turned to me or if it was just naturally going to happen. So I like to let that odd pause. Yeah, it just, it, now it just awkwardly happened. So yeah, that's how it usually goes. So, you know, here everybody has to do a temperature check and then after they work with me, they have to have a sanity check. And Patrick, I love that you have the Thor mug with your beverage because you can't just have a regular size glass. That is beautiful. Oh. Yeah, it's it's so big. It the, the it's just so iced tea. We oh, also we have some... Else. We have some cool stuff coming in. Um, you know, you know, as much as I think we're all focusing on business retention and business expansion, because there are some who are doing very well in this age and need to grow a little bit because they've either shifted into a market that's really you know, meeting a COVID demand, um, or we're on an upward trend anyways. Um, but there's there's retention has to be the goal right now. I mean, that's why you see all the cities coming out with grant programs and aligning people with business loan grant programs and trying to find people funding to to keep them afloat because 
we know that there's an end point to this somewhere and we just want to get there. We just want to get our businesses safely through this time. Um, but even in spite of all this, we've got some cool restaurant stuff coming into, I mean, I don't have a Phil's barbecue, Christine. That is like <laughs> the coolest thing ever. And I will, I will lay waste at Phil's barbecue because I can make up some barbecue. But we do have a really cool concept coming from the founder of Intasa Coffee, which is out in unincorporated Marietta in the county land. Um, it is going to be called Rival Coffee. It's going in just below the Holiday Inn Express. And I, I find it interesting just because of this. It is not a sit-down restaurant. It is not a fast casual restaurant. It is not a drive through It is not a delivery. It is all of it. So all in one space, you can go in and have a coffee bar experience that also serves alcohol. They're going to have breakfast and lunch. Um, and you can sit down in a coffee bar area that's kind of a fast casual type experience. They're also going to have a separated dining room that is a full-time dining room where you can sit down and have a full-service meal. They're also going to have a drive through um, so that you can drive through and get your morning coffee or, or morning food. It's kind of the best um, of everything, huh? And they're going to deliver to home. I mean, it really is. It is. This is why I say the, the age of calling anything quick serve and fast casual, and, and it's all going away. Everything is kind of blending together. And this is where I think we're going to cause our families a lot of heartburn in the future as, as industrial and office and residential and, and retail all kind of continue to blend. Um, but, but this is, I think, a cool example of a restaurant that's going a little bit more new age and trying out something unique, and, and it's getting very, very close. I think we're going to see them in the next month. They're opening up. And this so is going in the retail, is that, that's the retail plaza next to the Holiday Inn, right? Yes, exactly. It's going to be the first building opening in the retail plaza just south of the Holiday Inn Express. A little um, bit closer to Los Alamos, right? Yes, and okay. so right next to Los Alamos where we've got 532 or 8 a new apartments coming in, it's called the Bridges. So there's a new major residential development going in right across the street from the high school there on the nice. south side of Los Alamos. So you're gonna see some yeah. new residential come in, some new restaurant come in. Um, and there's a whole there's a whole center there. I think they're gonna have three or four restaurant pads when it's all said and done. So very cool. Um, that's starting to grow. We also it's on the smaller scale, we got a little uh, sit down restaurant called Sharon's Creole Kitchen. Today, this very day I was gonna go over there and get fried chicken and cornbread. Very excited about trying a new place. And then three people here at work packed their lunch. And I thought it might be egregious for me to order because it was a bucket of fried chicken and cornbread. And I thought it might be too much for me to order by myself. Where is that going, Scott? That is in Village Walk. So that came into the old Spinos location um, in Village Walk. So I'm very excited to try it. I will report back and let you know how it is. I bet it's, it's really good. Back. Did you have it already? Yes. You didn't even share? How was the cornbread? Uh, the cornbread's good. The hush puppies are better. Really? Oh, I can't wait. Okay, tomorrow. Karen, tomorrow I am coming to get your chicken. <laughs> I can't wait. So we do have we do have some uh, new restaurants popping up. And, and one of the things we're seeing, um, because obviously uh, each city, I think, has experienced a little bit of loss, bit of loss. along the way. There's one more story. But even though we're experiencing that loss, we're also seeing some new businesses come in and fill space. Stereo. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I, it, it's funny because uh, the, the new in Taz, I can't wait because it's literally, I pass right by there every single day. So it'd be perfect on the way to the office in the morning. Yeah. So and you'll have it before me too, you sucker. <laughs> um, so interesting because one thing that you brought up was this idea of with the Intaza um, kind of spin uh, of how businesses are, you know, having to figure out how to cater to different, you know, needs right now, right? So it's not just about, you know, the fast casual, it's also about the curbside pickup, and it's the delivery and right everything through. else. And it's, it's how does a business uh, adjust and make themselves more uh, effective in this kind of an economy, right? Um, and I say that because I just, before this, was on a, a call with um, uh, Roosevelt Ochoa, who you, you guys know from UCR. And, you know, they're, they're trying to, uh, put to put in place a program to help small businesses, especially, um, to kind of help them with the needs of this new economy. And, you know, we were talking about that, that, need for small businesses to figure out how can I pivot, right? You know, I know that, you know, the three of us and, and Christine was, we've all talked to businesses about how do you adjust your business, you know, uh, planning and, and make it more adjustable 
and suitable for what's going on right now. Um, and so I think that it's encouraging that we've got, you know, uh, you know, UCR, SBDC, um, putting in place different programming to help small businesses like that. And I think that helps with kind of what you were talking about, Kimberly, of this, the, you know, the, the business retention aspect. I think that there's going to be a lot of focus on that, you know, this, this next, you know, 12 to 18 months of how do we help these businesses get through this, but pivot and figure out how do I, re, you know, reset my sales to make sure I'm headed in the right direction. Yeah, and definitely what I'm seeing out there, I, I think it's something that's always been occurring, but now thanks to this pandemic, it's really been thrown into the spotlight. There's there's some business owners out there that will look for any opportunity and make an opportunity out of everything. And then there's some business owners that really just want to plug their nose and stomp their feet and refuse to agree with what's going on, you know, at the detriment to themselves, really. Right. And, I, and right. I'm seeing, well, and it, there's almost nothing in the middle. It's like, I've got business owners. Um, and, you know, I still talk to some of my, they all became my friends. So I still talk to some of them in Marietta, Corona, Wildemar. So I'm not necessarily just speaking about Wildemar businesses, but I just see some business owner friends that they're just like, um, in denial, almost refusing to change, angry that the government is shutting them down, um, angry that the government is is putting restrictions on them, and they are just not going to um, really work with what they've been given. And then we see other business owners that um, kind of embrace every new opportunity. Every time the governor kind of launches a uh, you know, fastball at them, they're like up for the challenge and, and they just kind of pivot and, and move forward again. And it's just, that was always going on in the background, but I think it's just really been a, a spotlight. This pandemic has really been a spotlight onto what those businesses are. And I'm, I'm sorry to say, but the ones that just refuse to pivot and the ones that refuse to see opportunity, they're probably not going to make it long-term. Yeah. There's just, there's no helping them. It doesn't matter how much help you try to provide them. Um, they're just, it's just not really ever going to take. So it's just been an interesting, it's very frustrating sometimes because yeah. you'd be talking to a business owner and you just want them like, just try this, you know, and, and they won't. But um, so it's just, it's been really interesting. I think how it, uh, there's been a great divide between the, the people who see the opportunity and the people that just refuse to play along with what's going on here to the detriment of their own business. And it's just, right. it's so difficult to watch sometimes. Yeah. All right, Scott. I'll jump in on this. I'm not going to wait for Patrick. I'm going to, I'll jump in on that and say, it is so much harder to be a business. I, I use this refrain all the time, but it is so true. When, when, to be a business today means you have to be a specialist in everything, or you have to be able to afford to hire a specialist in everything. The, you know, the idea that you have to, you know, be able to, swivel your business at any given moment and be ready for the next challenge and change the way you do operations and maybe go from a brick and mortar store to an online retailer, an omni-channel, making sure that you have the proper kind of social media and the proper kind of web presence and the proper kind of phone answering. And it is, it is a very complex and difficult and perplexing task. And so from a business side, I, I, I understand that it is almost impossible to keep up with everything. But that's what the world asks of us today, right? It is that you have some kind of a presence everywhere all the time and you're constantly ready for the next change. So, um, you know, it would be nice if we were just getting fastballs from the governor. And I think we're, we're getting well, a lot of yeah. off-speed pitches right it's, now. And you, it's you, that curveball and off-speed yep. pitch every now and then. You, you got to well, hit them off the plate. Yeah. So. And, you know, one of the ones that I love, actually, and it has, they, they, did, they did nothing but change a few words in their commercial. I don't know if I've brought this up to you guys before. But the Domino's pizza commercials, this to me just shows a, a company that understood its process so well, understood its target audience so well, and understood the, the situation at hand so well, that literally all they did was change a few words in their commercial, touchless pizza. Nobody was touching your pizza before. <laughs> but now, but they just, they changed just a few words in their commercial and totally updated it to the times. You yeah. know, their whole commercial says it's baked in a 450 degree oven and no one touches your pizza for, you know, and they show them like kind of tossing it into the box and then they, uh, you know, contactless delivery. But 
they didn't change anything. That's exactly what they'd been doing all along. And so I always kind of refer to them uh, when I'm trying to help another business. It, it doesn't always mean, I mean, obviously it depends on, on your industry. Every business is, as Scott kind of alluded to before too, is like a, as unique as a fingerprint nowadays. So of course we can't make generalized statements and expect it to just blanket cover every business. But in some cases, there are ways to just make some minor little pivots that could make a huge difference. And when you look at that Domino's pizza as a case study, that's a great example of them doing absolutely nothing, <laughs> but totally being relevant to what's going on for today's situation, you know? Yeah. So, but then Scott, to your point, other businesses have to make huge pivots. And I don't mean to undermine that at all, but, but to the ones that just, refuse to pivot because maybe they think it's too much work what are they missing you know what and, mm -hmm. and here's the thing i'm sure i know that they can sit down with me they can sit down with patrick they can sit down with scott um any of our other cities that are around us temecula sit down with someone and brainstorm some ideas at least you know and and maybe it, it might come down to if you meet with a couple of experts in the area and you just you really can't make it work for today's situation there's probably going to be a few of those examples too but um but in some cases, it might not be that difficult to do a few pivots and really come up with something that might change your business plan forever going forward. It might even be a better plan, you know? Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll give a great example of that right now is Mr. Patrick Theodore Ellis sitting to my immediate left in my screen. And the way that I've watched all of their various organizations change the way they do business, you know, it, it's not that different. I go to a mixer on, coming up on Thursday and they're going to have you know 50 to 75 people, but it's going to be in a in a chat box instead of in a in a bank. And everybody's going to get together. They're still going to talk. They're still going to mix and mingle. They're still going to have an announcer. Um, a lot of the components stay the same, but they manage to do it in a way that is still keeping people engaged, even though it's not the same. It's different. You know, even though they're now not going there for finger foods and a glass of wine. Um, they're doing that at their house and raising their glass during that conversation. So, mm -hmm. right. I, and I've watched that every step of the way with both of our chambers. I mean, your, your chamber is a little higher performing than mine, but it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's been impressive to watch because it, it really wasn't that complicated. It, it made perfect sense. For those of you really watching well. and not understanding, Scott, it's the same chamber. It's the Marriott oh, and Waldemar chamber. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> not everybody gets your humor, Scott. So, you know. Nobody gets my humor. It's the Marriott and Waldemar chamber. <laughs> I always give you a nice little inflection on the Waldemar, just so you know. Just <laughs> the Marriott and Waldemar chamber. You got to, yeah, Waldemar, up. Yes. Your voice goes up. Yeah. And, and I wanted to point out one more thing that has nothing to do with this conversation track, but I thought it would, would be a good thing to mention during this, which is businesses have had to be really, really knowledgeable about federal, state, city, county programs out there. And that's a lot of work. And I know everybody feels intimidated by the word grants, um, but grants today don't mean that you're a professional grant writer. It means that you're filling out a bunch of applications. Mm -hmm. and, paper. and um, one of them I'd really like to mention is the Riverside County Grant Program that they just reopened the second stage on. And the first stage uh, had a little bit of limitations. They've managed to create a new stage that, that wiped away. You can now have idle loans and still get the grant. So if you haven't looked at it, it's ribcobizhelp.org. It's a $10,000 grant, and you definitely should look at it if your business haven't already. I've heard of many businesses in our city that have gotten funded already, received the $10,000 from the first grant. So, you know, Pete, they've got $46 million. It's 4,600 grants. If you haven't looked at it, please do. So just keep those things in mind. I know that it seems intimidating. It is not that bad of an application process. Well, yeah. Scott, you bring up you bring up a good point too that I think, especially in Wildemar, because my position was new, so we really didn't have anybody uh, being the liaison between business and the city government. So we had a lot of uh, maybe disconnected businesses in Wildemar that had never really had the need to connect with their city government and didn't see why they would need to. Mm -hmm. and have, I still have a lot more work to do. I still need to connect with a lot more, but um, because of this, a lot of those businesses have connected with us. And I would just say that if anyone is watching this into the future that owns a business in whatever city you are in, if you haven't connected with your city government, if you're not on their newsletter list, um, if, if you're not receiving that information from your city, chances are you are missing out, 
for one thing, you know, I know all of us have been working really hard at making sure our businesses are up to date on what the county and state orders are, getting the guideline booklets out to everybody, um, the grant opportunities, the PPP opportunities, federal, county, local um, funding opportunities. And I know that for, you know, every one business that we do connect with, there's probably five or even 10 behind them that have no clue sure. that a city government can help you. And, and even further, obviously, the chamber. But, um, you know, as far as being absolutely free, no membership required, nothing, right? Um, you need to connect with your city. And it's been so frustrating to try to get in front of everybody because I know I'm I know I'm missing people you know and um, our mayor was doing some videos for a, a little bit there when we were really on lockdown and, and just asking people to please connect with us please get the newsletter so much better to know about something and not need it rather than find out that it's passed you by and wish you had known about it you know yeah. so absolutely true and I want to thank the Merida Wilmore Chamber of Commerce for putting all of the links to our newsletters Right below us, just look at the bottom of your screen. Like <laughs> right there. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, it's and like yeah, you're psychic, and, Scott. Yeah, and 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 to your point, Kimberly. Yeah, I mean, even from the chamber perspective, you know, we've for the last you know three or four months, everything we've done is 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 we don't care. You know, membership is not a requirement. It's it's all about making sure we're all in this together, and how do we get through this, and how do we figure it out because. You know, the the more people that make it through this, the better off we all are as a community. And right. so it's critical for that. So yeah, I, I totally agree. And and building out the 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 programs and 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 the the support mechanisms is is critical. And we've got a lot in place, but I know, you know, the three of us are, you know, we're talking every single week of more and new ones and how do we keep expanding this and how do we right. keep helping the businesses. And we'll continue to do that for, mm -hmm. you know, the next few years easily. So, yeah. And I don't think people understand. I mean, I hope they do. I think the ones that we have connected with do understand um, and feel it. But the ones maybe that have never tried, they don't understand how important this is. I mean, I know um, Scott and Patrick very well. We go to these businesses. We patronize these businesses. Very often the, the business owners become our friends and become part of basically our family. And so we do want to do everything. Yes, the heart. <laughs> we do want to do everything possible to try to help you and save you. And, and I don't know that um, anybody that hasn't connected with us in the past and maybe historically would not think to connect with the city government or understand what a chamber can do is really missing that opportunity to really... Um, feel that love and become part of the family and and that it is we do we talk about this non-stop to try to help save these businesses and what more can we be doing um and it, it's not just a job it's it's where we live and it's um we want to see these businesses thrive yeah I, and you, oh sorry patrick ellis sorry. i was going to just jump right in there Go right so, ahead. So, kim you'd made a, a great point earlier about some business, not all businesses are your typical retail that are out for promotion and trying to get people into a storefront. Um, there's plenty of them who want to work behind the scenes and have a little less notoriety and a little more animosity. Not animosity, I'm sorry, anonymity. <laughs> they're not Hopefully angry, not they're animosity. not angry, they're anonymous. Um, we don't so, need animosity. <laughs> too many, too many words there. And, and so they, they want to play a little bit behind the scenes. But even if that is your business, you should still connect with your city because you're an asset within your city and helping us to understand what you do helps us to know even if it's just small connections we can make along the way, maybe we can help your business, maybe you can help another business. And, and I think that all ties into what a Chamber of Commerce does, which is the, the Chamber is here to help all the businesses. So today, while our Chamber of Commerce is out giving away free masks to all the businesses that need them, you might not need them, and you might not need the advertising and marketing, you might not want to go to a mixer, but you want to be a part of an organization that does activities like that. You want to be a part of an organization that is there advocating for your entire business community. And I think that plays across what all of us do, which is we want to engage with you, we want to help you, and sometimes that might mean you don't need anything right now, but at least reach out and let us connect with you. Because mm -hmm. I think that there's some point in time when the relationship is going to pay off for you and we want to know you. And I think one of the best things, um, and it ties it all together with a nice little bow, is our coffee with the cities that the chamber does for both of our cities. 
Um, City of Wildemars is the second Tuesday of the month, and yours, Scott, is the fourth Tuesday of the it, month? It's the fourth, but the coffee's been lacking lately. There's been no donuts. <laughs> That's because you've been at home drinking your own coffee. <laughs> no, no. But, but even even though we've had to go to a zoom format the information is still great uh you know and that's really what this is about it's making sure that you have the necessary information and resources to carry your business forward and i think those two coffee with the city has always been one of my favorite meetings because that's our opportunity to really hear from the public what what questions they have and how we can answer their questions and get them information. So it's always well, been one of my favorite meetings. I will, I'll say it too, is that, you know, the Coffee of the Cities, two things about it. One is it's not just about business either, right? It's, it, you know, we've always encouraged residents to, you know, bring That's any right. question. It's, it's, this is your, this is your opportunity to ask a question of the city without having to do it at a council chambers, you know, to do it in yeah. a much more informal fashion. Um, but the other, the, the second point and, and, you know, probably more importantly is actually to Scott's point of, of the pivoting and, and shifting to a virtual aspect, I, I will tell you is we've had more engagement by more people on both of these in formats on, on the virtual than we ever had in person. Um, and, and that goes to the point of, of, you know, it's, we always, we always think about those businesses that are in their business working and can't get out yep we've now we've now identified ways to engage and and connect with those types of businesses and get them the information that they need that they could never get before that's right you've gone so that's omni -channel. Why, huh you've gone omni channel yeah i mean and that, that's off. why you know we that we're we won't go away from doing a lot of things right. quickly because people can connect and can get the information much more effectively. This and that's where we've had to pivot too, just like any of our businesses yeah. that we're trying to help. We've had to do, you know, us as, as government and, and chamber and um, service type organizations, we've all had to pivot too. And to that point too, I have my um, book club, once a month book club. And one of the books that we're reading right now, which is called Three Feet from Gold, um, the online opportunity is allowing that author to join us in July. So in July, cool. the author, and, yeah. and actually that book is a little bit different because not only is he the author, but he's the subject of the book. The book is about him writing the book. Huh. So, so it's like a double whammy. It's the author and the subject, the character, the main character in the book. It's one and the same. So um, he'll be joining us from San Diego and he's able to do that. So it really does open up some different opportunities that um, would he have driven up, I mean, San Diego's not that far. Would he have driven up to Wildemar and joined? Maybe, but, but think about it. It also opens it up to, we can have meetings now with anybody else. They don't have right. to be located locally. Right. Um, and while that was always kind of possible technology wise, at least for the past so years, it wasn't really accepted. It wasn't a widely accepted way of meeting still. So yeah, we've, we've all had to pivot too, and we've made some changes to way, the way we do things that probably aren't gonna go away into the future. They might change and shift and be accompanied by in-person meetings, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Because we're not just doing virtual mixers going forward, Patrick, I hope you realize. <laughs> or virtual, the mega mixer, we need to have the yes. mega mixer. Uh, eventually, um, when, when the time is right, we will get back to those types of events. Yeah. All yeah. events that don't have food can go virtual. Yeah. That's the basic element. Yeah. <laughs> Scott does not like his own coffee, apparently. So I, someone I bring, bring, bring Scott coffee. some coffee. I don't think drink hot. coffee. It would be a terrible, terrible yes. Yeah. So. so, yeah. Very good. Well, you know what? I, I want to thank you guys for sharing this information with us today. Um, I appreciate you guys taking the time to do this because I think it's beneficial for those in our community and those outside of our community looking into it as a possibility of expansion or, you know, or relocation. So um, thank you again. We'll talk next week uh, for everyone watching. Uh, yes, look for the links that Scott was referring to earlier, and I will see you next time on the e-conversations.